when a site is on the World Heritage List, actually it is assumed that the country which have, on which territory the site is located will do its best to, to attain the Sustainable Development Goal. But when a site is on the World Heritage List, the country will lose a little bit of its sovereignty. In fact, not only Cambodia is responsible for Angkor, Sambo Prekuk, Koker, Priavihi, but the 195 countries are also responsible for these four sites. And the World Heritage Committee, it has the right to criticize the countries if they do not protect well. And the countries, they have to report regularly to the World Heritage Committee. But this, of course, when the countries join the convention, they know. And when they propose a site, they know that the sovereignty will be a little bit limited. But there's a lot of benefits, especially the international protection. It's Article 6.3 of the Convention, which says that each state, 194 states, have committed themselves not to take any measure that might damage your World Heritage Sites. That is also valid in, in terms of armed conflict. But more than that, if Cambodia, or my country, Belgium, ask for assistance, the other countries have an obligation to respond positively. So when Cambodia request in 1993 the assistance of many countries to save Angkor, they created the ICC to actually coordinate that assistance. I'm now going to go through a little faster on the uh, world heritage in danger. Beside the list of world, the world heritage list, there is another list, a smaller one, of which is called the list of world heritage in danger. And these are sites which have been affected by armed conflict, theft, vandalism, natural disasters, some by too many illegal activities, especially on urban development, mass tourism, and last but not least poaching, especially for natural parks in Africa. So the World Heritage Committee can declare, they can vote, two-thirds of the members can actually 
transfer a site from the World Heritage List to the list of World Heritage in danger and ask the country to take immediate corrective measures. There are 56 countries in the world which are on that list. I will not give too many details, but of course the danger must be proven, ascertained, or potential. I will give, for instance, a danger which is ascertained is, a, for instance, if a bomb has destroyed a World Heritage Site. That is the case in Ukraine. The sites are on the World Heritage List, the list of World Heritage in danger. A potential danger, it is a danger for, of the future. For instance, there is a war between a country A and a country B. So the two countries they want to make sure they, they want to, to the, the, the sites of the two countries are potentially in danger. They might be attacked, but it's not yet. Angkor was on the list of World Heritage in Danger in 1993. Actually, in 92, it was threatened by armed conflict. There were still some fightings around the temple, pillage, vandalism, neglect, lack of management, and expertise. So Angkor had to, in a very short time, it was put in the list of list of heritage in danger, but the government of Cambodia at that time headed by uh, uh, Norodom Sihanouk as chair of the, that was before the elections, so the chair of the Supreme National Council, he had to commit the country to ad uh, adopt a legislation, create an agency, which became Apsara, establish the famous boundaries and the buffer zone, the ZEMP, we spoke about it this morning, the buffer zone and a system of coordination and monitoring. So, the government of Cambodia, after the elections, the government was constituted and then many measures were taken. The ICC, like you can see on this picture, the ZEMP that we spoke about, all the boundaries and the buffer zones, the law, the establishment of Apsara, and a campaign against pillage and illicit traffic. Pillage continued until 2000 at a large scale 
But finally, in 2004, Angkor left the list of world heritage in danger and joined the normal list. Uh, I think I have spoken a lot now, but I, I just want to, to, to close now by mentioning the, an issue which sometimes people speak about, oh, maybe UNESCO will remove the site from the World Heritage List, and nobody wants that. That has happened three times. The first case in 1994, uh, in, uh, a site was included in 1994, it was in Oman in the Middle East. And that was a national park called the Arabian Oryx Century. The government has proposed a site for listing, it was included, but a few years after, the government did a major work, public work, and practically destroyed the national park. And all these animals died. <laughs> Another one is a city in Germany called Dresden. And actually, this city, which is one of the oldest cities in Germany, the local government had a plan to make a new bridge. But they didn't do what is recommended under the guidelines. They didn't undertake a participatory approach. So the two the two interests between the people who wanted to make the bridge and people who wanted to protect the city, they never spoke to each other, they were fighting, and the World Heritage Committee decided to delist the city of Dresden. <laughs> And another city also in Europe is Liverpool, and Liverpool, same story. The, this landscape was included in the World Heritage List as a traditional maritime harbour from the 19th and 20, early 20th century. But the local government wanted to make huge public work, new development, shopping malls and so on. Same story, no discussion, no dialogue, deleted from the list. Okay. So I think at this stage that all what I wanted to share with you on World Heritage Listing, I've been a little beyond my time and please apologize. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think there's no, there's no specific rule on that. But in international diplomacy, countries like to let they don't like when countries come back too many times. <laughs> so I think they have to be elected. So I think the countries, they will support new countries to become chair. 
that's my feeling. So the chance for Cambodia to become again, uh, not immediately. <laughs> អ្នកដឹកនាំក្រុមនៅក្នុងគណៈកម្មការហ្នឹងម្ដងហើយការពីចំណោតឧបនាយករដ្ឋមន្ត្រីសភាអញ្ចឹងកត់ស្រួលថ
ហើយនឹងគឺអូសិនធិសទ្ធិហើយនឹងអ៊ីនធែគ្រីធីអញ្ចឹងអូសិនធិសទ្ធិមានន័យថារំនៃ a learning wheel in the cock no day, they were curling, they had you to chop how and with flying that we mean them like here to new to egg it up and they are curling to a man and not mean them like integrity. How young brothers save and check out a curling tap room, let a but they upon that young that's not to mean page of money. Then they have to add a management plan. How young throw one time no pan car, crook crow, or young person to get chop when she how that young I crook crow, but I will be. The management plan is a big document, many pages. How management plan is a big document, many pages. The management plan is a big document, many pages. The management plan is a big document, many pages. The management plan is a big document, many pages. The management plan is a big The law, the royal decree, the sub decree, the prakas, the Organigram of the staff of the management institution. ចឹងដើម្បីបង្ហាញថាផែនការគ្រប់គ្រងរបស់យើងពិតជានឹងអាចអនុវត្តបានយើងពិតជាអាចការពារបានពិតមែននោះយើងត្រូវតែ then UNESCO Secretariat, it's called the World Heritage Center in Paris. They will review and check if all the documents are there. How in Shanghai, a plant, a mere material on car UNESCO that had meant it down the barren, no poor car fruit, and not a little egg aside of my own. Then, if it's a cultural site, UNESCO will send it to ECOMOS. If it's a natural site, they will send it to IUCN. These two advisory body will undertake a mission to the site to visit it. And they will make recommendations to the World Heritage Committee and say, yes, no problem, it can be included, or one has to look at that, 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 or that needs to be done before being included in the World Heritage List. So most of the time the, the, the file is sent back to the country and they have to do some work and then resubmit it. Then it's, we have to wait, then the UNESCO, uh, that returns to ICOMOS and IUCN, and if they're happy, UNESCO send it, put that on the website. For the World Heritage Committee member, they can look at the document. And when they meet, so at the end of this month in New Delhi, then the people who will rep attend the World Heritage Committee, they will have read already all the document and they can vote yes or no. Thank, uh, thank you for your question. Actually, uh, before responding, I think we have anticipated on the, the next item, which was 
the que two questions that I had asked, I think we have entered into that, which was, are you in your daily work uh, having legal issues and how do you address them? So I think we are right in that topic. Yes, so this is an important legal issue. What can I say about that? I'm not here going to bring you a solution right now. All what I can say is that this kind of situation of people who want to establish their house within the boundaries of World Heritage Site or in the buffer zone, that happens unfortunately for a num in a number of cases. Uh, in Angkor, the government, when including the site in 1993, had made quite a large uh, area as zone number one and quite a large buffer zone. And indeed, it was at that time a compromise because there was an even larger concept which was to include the city of Siem Reap. But the government said no. So finally, no, the city is not. But nevertheless, these zones are quite, quite large. Uh, the approach that has been taken by the, the Cambodian government and which is actually registered in the proposal submitted to the World Heritage Committee in 93 is that the population that existed in 93 will be uh, able to stay. Nothing was said about other people who are going to come. They just came. So nobody anticipated at that time that so many people would move. Not the Cambodian authorities, not the World Heritage Committee. Chàng chân là đại sa đồng bọn đồng cò dương chi đồng bọn đại thống chi bảy tỷ cặp hoàn đại miền và chi chun ruột nữ hơi thống hơi ca bị tập hồn nói cứ junisco chẳng ao đại bản châu tiếng tì cầm xiêm điệp tiết bàn tay và thả ba dương ập rồng chẳng hơi dương cho bản chí trầm tài đồng bọn đồng cò bàn tay tu chỉ chẳng ná co nơi tài thống này hơi sản lập quát quát mình ban ao chi đồng nọ sai thà cua rư mình cua té bên tai ở vây đại dương ban cho mình chi là không khả năng pleno tạo miền bắc chi chun bản mán hơi nơi pleno cốt trong dây tha sầm rạp nẹt đầy một vị khang cấu mình miền tu này tia thở nơi đường tây cứ trời tái phát chân so I'm not aware about a situation which is at the same scale as Angkor because the site is very big and because actually a lot of people have moved inside. So I'm not aware of a similar case which is as important as this one. Jeng kuat menton ban khoen tha pai te ka phuan seng tiet dai mien tom hom thom sa dieng nang jeung nang te dai kaat mien do jeung nang aton mien te. All I can say is that the for UNESCO and for World Heritage listing the commitment that has been taken between the government and with uh, the World Heritage Committee is to make sure that the population who was there in 93 has the right to stay. But there's no commitment for the others. Yes. Yeah. Jeng samrap net dai ban nau tang pi chnam kai bai mao ku kon mien sut nau pan tai samrap net dai nau krau ku mien mien sut te. Now, is there any risk of the site being deleted from the World Heritage List? Personally, I don't think so. But of course, this depends on how the government respond to that new situation. ចំពោះករណីដែលថាអង្គរក្នុងត្រូវបានលុបចេញពីបញ្ជីបេតិកភណ្ឌឬអត់នៅពេលអនាគតនោះគាត់មិនសង្ឃឹមថាអញ្
practice that has been taken by uh, Apsara authority, they uh, asked the member of the ICC to visit the two relocation sites, and I actually have seen them too, and uh, I think that is a good practice. ហើយជាក់ស្ដែងគឺអាជ្ញាធិបតីអាប្សារាបោះយើងរដ្ឋាភិបាលបោះយើងបានអញ្ជើញខាងក្រុមការងារ for those who are happy, I think the authorities have done what needed to be done. Yeah. But for those who are not happy, there, there is indeed some work ahead. There's work to be done. Yeah. So I, I was at the latest ICC and I listened to the discussion and uh, indeed uh, the government explained in detail what they want to do, what kind of facilities they are providing to the population over there. And I think this is a good practice. Explaining, explaining, explaining is very important. ហើយអ្វីដែលគាត់ធ្លាប់បានស្ដាប់កន្លងមកនៅក្នុងអាយសីស៊ីក្ដីនៅក្នុងអ្វីដែលរដ្ឋាភិបាលយើងបានបញ
developed. Maybe not for those who are not happy, but for the children. Okay. ចឹងដោយជានៅក្នុងអ្វីដែលគាត់បានផ្ដល់ឲ្យជាទិន្នន័យអាប់ដេតចុងក្រោយ <coughs> And another issue, and I think involving other institutions is important. But this is my idea. This is more my idea. But uh, the problem that you are mentioning is also a social problem. People have no money, they have no land, they come from another province, they come here, they are poor, they look for job. Yeah. So, I am sure there is in Cambodia a ministry in charge of social issues. I've, uh, I think it's important to involve other agencies and ministries in the process because it's not only an issue for Apsara. I think Apsara has a responsibility, but I think involving other institutions in solving a problem which is has different aspect yeah. is important yeah. ចឹងកន្លែងនេះខ្ញុំខ្ញុំចង់និយាយនិទិថាអញ្ចឹងបើសិនអភិបាលចុនបដ្ដាយនោះចូលរួមអភិវឌ្ឍចង់និយាយថ